This is episode three of Outlander Cast. People disappear all the time. Most are found, eventually. Disappearances, after all, have explanations. Usually. Welcome to Outlander Cast with Mary and Blake. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Be a song of a last that is gone, save for that last behind. Mary of Soul, she sailed on a day over the sea to Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I volunteer as tribute. Uh, you volunteer as tribute? What yes. do you mean? Did you like how Jamie did that? Oh, that was really special. You're right. He pulled a Katniss there. I can't believe you didn't get that reference. It took... I'm sorry. It's late. <laughs> It's late. I do God. have I do have some big news for you guys. This is why my brain is frazzled. We have a new member of our family. Yes, we do. It was really something random. I'm not pregnant. We found a cat today. <laughs> Thank God. And Sorry. well, we didn't find a cat. A friend. We were at a friend's birthday party. There was this cat on the road, and it's a kitten, and it was a like an orange kitten, and literally probably a month old. And oh, not even. Seriously, he's like the side, like the palm of my hand. Yeah, he's, he's that he's big. He's little, and there was no mom around. We couldn't find any owners, and pretty much the whole afternoon we were staked out. And everyone was like, "Who's gonna take home this cat?" So I stood up, man. I stood up. You and volunteered his tribute. I did. I I was like Jamie. I'm probably gonna have scratches on my back just like him because this cat has claws. But we were sitting there, we're driving home with this, you know, palm sized kitten in my lap. And, and you're probably wondering now why we're telling you all of this. Yeah. Why, Blake? Because we named the cat Sassanok. Because we found him in Massachusetts. We're from Rhode Island, so he's an Outlander, and he was wandering the woods. Very confused. Just, just showing up. Hey, guys, I'm hey. here. What's going on? So uh, that And he's got orange hair. He does. And Jamie does. He's like a true Scott. He is, except he's a cat. So that's why I'm a little off kilter. But um, yeah, <laughs> Jamie, way to be. Way to catness that up. So before we jump into our recap about this week, we wanted to quickly address a couple of things about last week and specifically a review that we had on iTunes because Blake ruffled some feathers and we want to make sure that they get unruffled yes that's right look you guys are just getting to know me sometimes i say things uh that i i stand by i definitely do but they may not come out as properly as i want them to and i'm just kind of not a nice guy sometimes (laughs) and that kind of rubs people the wrong way so we got a review from zeyik is it z-e-y-i capital k the review says, well, the title was, Not Surprised About BJ, BJR Rape. Now, Zeek, you're probably not even listening because you gave us a one star, which is cool. And honestly, I want to thank you for this review. You said, I mean, really? The way she was dressed alone, he is powerful, so that makes not surprising that he almost raped her? So this goes back, last week we were talking about the Black Jack Randall and how he started to assault Claire at when he when he caught her in the yes. woods. And Blake said something about, uh, what was it? I, I can't blame him. Yeah, and what yes. Blake meant was that he couldn't blame Jack, Black Jack Randall for thinking Claire was a whore because of the way she was dressed. I mean, I'm wearing a nightgown right now. And yeah, you if are. I were in 1743, probably people would look at me and say, wow, I see so much of your skin. You're a little scantily clad. But I tried to make Blake clarify that because I thought it was a little confusing. Yeah, it was a little confusing, and we did clarify. I obviously don't agree with the the practice of rape. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who would really think that was a good idea, and I don't. I'm trying to highlight Blackjack Randall's mentality that he is a captain of the 8th Dragoons in the British Army. He thinks he is the man, and he's going to take what he wants. 
And I, I don't necessarily blame him for thinking that this woman was, uh, in his words, a whore because of the way she was dressed and she's just running around. Now, again, I'm not saying I condone rape, but I'm trying to get in the guy's mindset and I don't necessarily blame him for thinking that she was, in fact, a whore. So we just wanted to do a quick little... So th- let me say this. I want to, again, Ziek, thank you for this review. You've given me an opportunity, number one, to clarify, but number two, yeah, be a little bit more careful with what I'm intending and make sure I choose my words a little bit more properly. Yes. So thank you. I in, in thank you for the review and I, I appreciate it, honestly. We'll read some more of the reviews later, but we wanted to definitely get that under our belt. Now, speaking about last week, our friend Marie tweeted to us that the voiceovers are going to continue because the story is being told from Claire's point of view. We had talked a lot, are these voiceovers necessary? Why mm-hmm. are they here? And that's Marie's point. She also mentioned that, we, because we had said last week, you had said Sam Wise. You, you referred <laughs> yeah. to the actor Sam, who plays Jamie as Sam Wise, from, meaning from Lord of the Rings. And Marie told us that Sam Hewen's parents actually used to call him Sam Wise. Oh my God. That his whole family are huge Lord of the Ring fans. One ring to rule them all. She Truth be told, and Sam's brother was even named after one of the elves. Really? An elf that like you probably wouldn't know. Okay. But yeah. I think his name is like Clondin or something it like that. It wasn't Legolas? No, but that is how hardcore this family is. So for you to reference Sam as Samwise. That was totally was unplanned, really cool. by the way. I know. I know. Really cool. And then we had another uh, great feedback from Anne Tekatch. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Last week, I said my favorite part in the episode was when Claire realized that the actors were shooting lime ammunition and that music with the bagpipes and the drums, it was just so cool. Anne actually let us know that the music at that point was not by Bear. It was actually by Clanadonia, and it's a song called Hammerstead. Hammerstead? Hammersteed. Hammersteed. I'm going to make sure that this Hamster music... Heed. Hamster Heed. There you go. Oh, gosh. I'm really bad at reading. I'm <laughs> going to make sure that this song is up on our Facebook page. And thank you so much, Anne, for making sure that Clanadonia gets proper credit. All right. It is time to talk about the title this week. And the title is called Castle Leoc. Blake, what do you think the title's all about? <laughs> Hmm. hmm. Jeez, God. What was this? No, Castle Leoc obviously refers to the castle upon which we this episode was based. And we saw this castle in its kind of ruins in the first episode. I liked the juxtaposition of seeing, I already mentioned this in the last podcast, of seeing Castle Leoc kind of messed up in the first episode. And now in its glory in the second. And you see all the great scenes that Claire is now interacting in within the glory of Castle Leoc, but you also see them get, get intercut with her little, you know, uh, run around in it with Frank or in, in the pilot. All of that setup finally paid off. You get to see her interacting with all this stuff, and you kind of felt like, oh, this is probably coming back to haunt her, that she's going around and and doing some some really cool things in this castle. And now it's coming back to haunt her like she actually has to live it out. She has to live it out, and those conditions look a little nasty. It was oh. really muddy in that castle when they all came home, and they're jumping off their horses. And I felt like it would smell like horse crap. Oh, it easily did. I think that, that the, that's what it was supposed to be kind of showing you, that it probably didn't smell too good. Good salt of the earth, people. And the thing that I did, I did like a voiceover that started this one. Mm-hmm. Claire basically said, you know, I drove to Castle Leoc last time. Now we've just ridden for a few days on horses. I am never going to find my way back. Sure. So is that her resigning to the fact that she is just stuck there, you think? Um, no, I I just think, you know, probably this whole time she's been trying to be like Hansel and Gretel, like looking at different trees. Okay, I need to remember that tree so I can find my way back. And she's just been so jumbled up that, you know, she's starting to become a little hopeless. A little hopeless. So- it's, that, it's that final realization, like... Holy crap, this is not a dream. I am really here. Like, I am stuck in this place. I freaking drove here yesterday or two days ago, whatever, however long it was. And now I'm on a horse with hairy Scotsman. 
Yeah. What am I doing here, you know? You know who comes out as a little ray of sunshine? Who? Mrs. Fitz. Oh, now I was calling this lady Mrs. Patmore the entire time from Downton Abbey. Oh my god, I love Mrs. Patmore. If you are a Downton Abbey fan, Oh, you know who we're talking about then. Yes, she is this lovely little woman who runs the kitchen. Well, she runs out, Mrs. Fitz, and she just loves on Rupert something fierce. Oh, it's like it's like a mother son relationship almost. Um, yeah. However, I love the line where she's like, "You smell like a sweaty rat that's been driven through the S word." <laughs> or does she say that to Murta? She might have said. I think she she said it to one of them. She's no, like, she said it to the second one. Yeah. So and he's like, "Yeah, come on, give me a kiss." That's, then yeah, that's who she. Yes. <laughs> so I just thought it was hysterical. I just loved that little line. Yeah, that was um, great. And then she's so bubbly, you know, giving her little boy some loving, and then she just turns to Claire and she oh. goes, "And what do we have here?" Oh, some serious, serious dank eye yes. coming from Miss Fitz. Claire gave a really cool stare down, though. She was you. You didn't know if she was in shock or if she was just trying to hold on to her pride. Yeah, you see, and this is something that I think Claire gets into trouble with, not with Miss Mrs. Fitz. Later on in the episode, when she is like trying to hold her ground, mm-hmm. and she's like talking to Dougal, and she's like, "Well, you just better give me an answer on why you follow me around." And Dougal just turned around and was like, "All right, lady, I don't know who you are, and I and you see it in his face. He's like, I've literally had it up to my eyeballs with you. I think you are a British spy, and she get and she steps in it, and she steps in it." A lot in this episode. Yeah. You know, with the Dougal thing. And then thinking that the kid was Dougal's kid, which... Was Colm's kid. uh, Yeah. No, no. She thought it was Dougal's kid, but it was actually Colm's kid. Yes, And I really... I got an idea on this too, by the way. Save it for your outlandish theory. Well, no. I got got like three outlandish theories today. That's what it's for. But I'm only going to have one. I'm only going to pick one. Okay. Yeah. So, but I'm not going to go with the outlandish theory. But basically, Claire... I mean, Claire, as we got to see, she's a very... self-assured young woman yeah. and, and she, she, people she aren't used to that step so she probably stepped in something on her way inside that castle <laughs> after all those all those horses but i did like that jamie introduced her mm-hmm. you know claire was just kind of giving the stare down and um then then they go off and i liked how mrs fitz was like we need to find you something to wear some something a bit more you know like yeah, you're basically more wear. wearing nothing and, and, and why do you think that she had that quick turnaround on Claire. I think because Jamie vouched for her. And Jamie said, you know, we pretty much caught her. Dougal wanted to bring her in. So be nice to her. Because she went from like serious side eye. Like I think she basically invented the side eye. You know what it is? It's girls. Girls in general don't like new girls coming to be part of their club. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're very protective of their guy friends. They're very protective of their boyfriends. And here comes this young woman boobies sticking out of her dress because she's not wearing a proper corset. Can you just say that again? Say that again. Boobies sticking out of her dress. (laughs) Thanks. She was high beaming. And so, of course, Mrs. Fitz was like, who the heck is this hussy? Like, what what is going on here? I'm going to be cool with you. The thing that surprised me is that she goes from giving her side eye thinking that she's a hussy to all of a sudden being like, yo, girl, Jamie's going over there. Well, she probably thought she was some kind of prisoner because they are. They're they're fighting, so it makes sense. You know, you don't want to trust these people. What I liked, what really made her change her view the viewpoint though, was when Claire said, "I need to take care of his wounds. I need to make sure it doesn't get infected." AKA, <laughs> and, and you see Mrs. Fitz give her the look like, "What the hell does infected, infected. mean?" Yeah, and and then she asks <laughs> Claire if she's a charmer. Yeah, she's a healer. Or, or from or, the Beaten Clan. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. In which they reference later on. Colm asks her, right? Yes. Do, do you think Mrs. Fitz gave her, gave her the bit, like, gave Colm that information? No, from what I, from what you see with Colm later on the episode when he does say, you know, our our healer, pretty much our medicine man. He was of was the Beaten, beaten. Clan. Yep, yeah, okay. So I think this clan, they were just really cool, smart, medicine people yeah. you know you know those you know those families where like mom's a doctor dad's a doctor oh yeah son's a doctor all, like all those harvard kids they're yes, all doctors yes all those legacy kids basically like the beaten clan was like the legacy harvard medical kids okay i got and you. uh but one of them you know so like they're super smart yeah except that guy died the one who was the, <laughs> so the he wasn't the, for the, he was like the, the runt of the group no he, probably he went, just died. he was the guy he was the kid that went to yale <laughs> <laughs> he probably just died because everyone died during this time because they were sick. So this is where you first get your first flashback cut 
in the hallway. So mm-hmm. Claire's being led into Castle Leoc, Yep. And she gets, she remembers walking through it with Frank. Now, this is setting the stage for this show. Obviously, we're going to be seeing a lot of different flashbacks, whether it's just a visual glimpse or if we're going to be hearing some audio as well. What did you think about this? Watching Claire walk down, first it was Claire and Frank, then it was Claire and Mrs. Fitz. Yeah, I liked this idea a lot. And not because it was giving us necessarily exposition, but it was giving us the opportunity to remember back to the pilot that, yes, this lady is stuck in the 18th century, but she had a life before this. She's already been here. It reminded me a lot of Christopher Nolan, actually. It, rem- it reminded me of like how he does those quick cuts like in uh, Batman. It also reminded me of like uh, The Prestige, how they do those quick cuts. Really, really cool stuff. Almost silent cuts, very quick imagery, just to, just to jar you into thinking, oh yeah, that's right, that she was already here. I wonder though, how much and how quickly these flashbacks will run out it, before they, they before they have to start making things up, like that scene when she's being interrogated by Colum at the dinner table, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh yeah, Frank told me that he, he, all you have to do is just tell stick a lie, but truth. stick to the truth." Yeah. And it was like, I was like, come on, dude, that's like way too convenient. Well, how would you have gotten that otherwise? Because as as a book reader, I get it. That was not something that they made up necessarily for television. But mm-hmm. I want to know, why is that bad? Why was it bad to have this knowledge that Frank had told Claire? Think about it. You you make donuts all day. Like yep. Blake, is, Blake makes donuts for his family business. You come home and you tell me, oh, guess what? I made a new donut. So it would be logical and make sense that Frank, who teaches spies, would come home and say, hey, you want to know something? If you were ever interrogated, the best thing you could do is stick to the truth as much as possible. And that's what Claire did. She thought, all right, where does my family live in France? Uh, the North? Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, the North. And oh, I'm going to see some people I don't really know. So I don't think it was that bad. No, I agree with you. I have to concede that point. He probably would come home and talk about it. He probably would tell her these things. It wasn't that bad to, in my opinion, have those flashbacks. I think that it helped inform you and understand why Claire was speaking the way she was speaking and why how she's decided to make her backstory. Yeah, I concede that point that he probably would have come home and talked about it to her. But I also feel like it was just inserted in there just to make that point. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't organic. I'll say that. It wasn't an organic flashback. It just felt like it was copy and pasted. And I thought that it was too convenient. That's what I'm getting at. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, I liked it. I'll okay. disagree with you All on right. that. All right. Next scene that we get to is Claire has to go bandage Jamie again. I mean, what a tough gig this girl has. She has to repeatedly take care of this guy's <laughs> shoulder. So she goes in and she gets to see Jamie's back for the first time. And I I thought it looked like the back of gremlins when gremlins get wet <laughs> and they like make more gremlins. But the best d- d- description was by Amy Wilkinson, who wrote that it looked like packaged honey hams from the deli counter at the grocery store. Oh, I know. That's oh exactly God. what it looked like. So totally all scarred. And we end up finding out that these scars are from being flogged by actually Black Jack Randall. Mm-hmm. And twice, had they done it like right away, he probably would have died. But they did it twice in one week. And you get a flashback of Jamie and his sister and you understand that the Redcoats came, Jamie's father is away and they they wanted to attack and assault Jamie's sister Jennifer and he said, nope, take my body, take me instead of her. They flogged him but they knocked him out and she still probably went with Black Jack Randall. Jamie and Jenny. Yep. Like, can you get a little bit more alliteration? You know? <laughs> like, People love alliteration. They must have loved Jays back then. Yeah, I don't why know. not? I like this scene a lot. And, ah, oh, God, I love the guy who plays Blackjack Randall, Tobias Menzies. Yes. Tobias Menzies is yes. his name. This guy owns that role. Yeah. Owns it. And, oh, God, he is just... You can just see that condescending, like, British nature almost mm-hmm. and you see him like and he remember he licks his thumb and he touches her face and he 
and then he rubs her lips with it. Like, I just, I can do whatever I want to you. I can literally, I could flick you in the eyeball right now if I wanted to. Just, just you know, just because I could. I hate when people lick their thumb and they rub your face. Like, if you have food on your face and they do that, that's nasty. Oh, my mom used to do that, and she used to smoke. So it'd be like all smoky and nasty gross. and gross. Oh. You know who he reminded me of too? Uh, have you ever seen the movie The Patriot? He reminded me of uh, the guy that Jason Isaacs played in The Patriot, like the bad br- British guy. Oh, like that, just that bad attitude. You know what I'm yeah, talking Steve, about? I do. I I'm going to go after your family. I'm going to kill them and I'm going to get you. Well, he says this is what you get when you fight back against the English. Oh, I mean, he I is know. just tough. And I loved that Jamie never screamed. He didn't cry. I mean, he took that beating seriously. And you felt so bad because poor Jenny. I mean, she just had her shirt ripped off, and <laughs> you saw boobs in the first four minutes that, of the know, show. Well, yeah, that that was that was it, and then it goes back, and it's back to Jamie talking about Claire, and says, you know, I was, I, I was told that I I had murdered someone, and then I tried to escape, and I guess whatever the redcoats say, the redcoats feel is true. So yeah, which is great because we tweeted out, you know, last night uh, while we were watching the show that history is written by the conquerors and as of right now the british are the conquerors yeah it's gonna come soon come to a close as we all know you know pride in the usa but (laughs) but yeah the british say whatever they want they get away with whatever they want and black jack randall obviously not a a blanket statement of the british empire but there's a faction that he represents and it is 100% true. Yeah, and scary, man. And they write that history, and they will do whatever they feel like, especially in Scotland. Oh, man, Claire must be feeling pretty crummy because all the books that she read, she now realizes there are two <laughs> sides to every story. Mm-hmm. Jamie was really cute. He made a couple of funny little talks about you know chickens being very poor company. Yeah. Um, his muscles, holy smokes, That boy. guy has not eaten a cupcake in Our about donut? three years. Nope. As soon as as soon as he was like auditioning for this show, he was like never eating a cupcake again. Nope, I don't think he's eaten a piece of rice. Like that that man is all protein all the time, and he eats grass. I guess his farts must smell bad. <laughs> so I loved when he said, "You're a kind woman with a good touch." And yeah, your husband is a lucky man. Oh, th- this was a total power move by Jamie. A total. What do you po- mean? Total power guy move. You you can tell that he's in to Claire. Okay. All right. And this is this is a guy's way of being like, I'm gonna test this girl out to see how much she really cares about her husband, and I'm gonna initiate this conversation. Oh, so you think that this was like a f- serious flirtation? Oh hell yeah, it was serious flirtation. This is all premeditated. Wow. And like, th- this these are old tricks, girl. Come on, man. Don't you know that? No, I'm a girl. I, I didn't get the boy handbook. Apparently not. I, th- this is like, this is the guy that plays the best friend to the to the girl that already has the boyfriend mm-hmm. and is like, oh, I could I could like get in on this if I really wanted to. Well. So he has to play all sensitive and he has to like really compliment the husband. Oh, yeah. This is like Well, he ends up making guy Claire code. cry. Yeah. And it was interesting how instead of saying like, is he dead? Where is your husband? Jamie asks, you know, is he not alive? And Claire thinks about it for like a brief second. And, and she, she realizes, realizes yeah. he's not alive. Mm-hmm. Frank is not alive in 1743. And that makes her sob something fierce. And Jamie takes her in his arms and says, you need not be scared of me nor anyone else as long as I'm with you. And... I loved because then she said, well, what about when I'm not with you? And he's like, you, you can't forget you're English. And here, that's not a pretty thing to be English. But before they had that cute little banter while she's crying and he's holding him, they pull apart. And there was this moment I thought they were going to kiss. I thought so, too. And I would have been very upset had that happened. Well, because there's no reason. Yeah. I mean, granted, the sexual attraction is probably there. And Claire's just been through it all. And hey, Jamie's a young strapping man. But... It was like a little weird and inappropriate. Yeah, and I wanted to be like, all right, time You're out, crying guys. crying about your husband. Yeah. You might be kissing a little bit. I, I, you know, I don't blame him for trying. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting into trouble now. I don't blame Jamie for trying to kiss Claire. I don't blame him. How about him. trying to give her the eyes 
that say I would like to kiss you because he didn't even go in. It wasn't even like he went. It was like snitch. a ninety ten thing. It was more. You it know? was like a look. It was the look right there. Oh yeah, it was like look. I'm looking at the mouth to give you the signal that I'm gonna try to kiss you, but yeah. I don't want to make the commitment quite yet. It's kind of like you know, like it's like <laughs> when you're trying to hug somebody. Like, do you do like pelvis to pelvis, or do you like do butts out hug? Oh, I hate hugging. Or that even was which the equivalent. Side you go on. That yes. was the that was the equivalent of the butt out hug. Yes. It's that, like awkward. We're doing this, but we don't really know. And I'm I'm glad that they didn't kiss there. It and uh, clearly, Jamie and Claire are going to be a thing. It, it just you I can, mean they have the attraction is definitely there. yeah. It's gonna they're, they're going to be a thing, and it's gonna and I, and it's okay to serve the story. I just wonder how long it's going to last. Mm, we'll I, to find out. This actually brings up a really good point. For those of you who may be listening to us for the first time, haven't listened to episode one of Outlander Cast, we want to just revisit the fact that Blake is a non-book reader. Mm -hmm. I have read the books. This podcast, Outlander Cast, is specifically going to be spoiler-free. We are going to make sure that there are no book spoilers. So if you are coming to this and you have read the book, enjoy, my friends. If you're coming to it and you haven't read the book, enjoy and don't be fearful that we're going to ruin it for you. Yeah, this podcast is about the TV show Outlander. TV show Outlander, not the book Outlander or the however could billion books there are. You don't even know because you haven't even read it. Written by Diana Gabaldon. I, the, and there's a very specific point why we're doing this podcast. Yeah, it's the, for the TV show, it, and we may be doing some reading in the off season. but here yeah. is my, my PSA, my quick PSA before we continue to the recap. Blake and I both use the Twitter. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some of you have been tweeting us with some things that are spoilerific. Oh, and super I get it, spoilerific. But Blake's also been answering some of those tweets. So if you're going to tweet Outlander Cast, please do it spoiler free because Blake. Yeah, not could only read for it. me, but for people that maybe listen to this podcast that have not read the books yet. Yes. That information is public, you know, and there's there are some people out there that will literally freak out with these spoilers. So don't don't involve us in your spoilers. However, if you are a book reader and you have some different theories that might be different. Because I mean, the show is inevitably going to differ from the book. Yes. I mean, I can tell you already, something in next week's trailer is really different than in the book. So okay, Don't say it. I'm not saying what it is, but I'm saying book readers can have fun too. Let's okay. get back to the recap. Yep, let's do it. Um, while Claire is thinking about Frank... There was this scene where it flashed to Frank and the Reverend looking for Claire. And they're standing in the car and they're walking around and Claire's thinking, is he looking for me? Uh, I wonder if he thinks I was abducted or dead or if I left him for another man. And I was wondering, is Claire just imagining Frank or is in real time, is Frank actually looking in this abandoned car with the Reverend? Is he actually looking for Claire? So it's this whole time travel thing once again. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> But I sat there and I said, is Claire making this up or is Frank actually looking for her right I tend now? to think that Claire is thinking about the reaction Frank would have. Okay. That isn't to say that Frank wouldn't have that reaction, but this story is from her perspective. So she's probably sitting there imagining it going, yeah, this is probably what Frank would do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I gotcha. I gotcha. So Claire goes and has a nice little nap, goes to bed when Jamie tells her to, and she gets woken up that morning by Mrs. Frank. Fit. Oh. And there was some really cute music, from some fun music, almost like a little waltz of a song. She tells her to have some broth. However, Mrs. Fitz gives her like time to eat two spoonfuls <laughs> and of broth. She's like, broth. let's go, get dressed. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but if I was just going to eat broth, I would need like two gallons because I'm really hungry. Mrs. Fitz is qu quickly becoming my favorite character. I might be right there with you. I love her. I love her hand things too. the <gasps> Like the arm covers. The gloves, yes. The arm gloves are great. Um, how do you feel about that brassiere? <laughs> Did you see your reaction? Oh, she What was... kind of corset is that? <laughs> it's a brassiere. And then you saw more boobs. It's from France. <laughs> it's from France. More I mean, boobs that's... in 18 minutes. Hey, well, welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, guys, fun fact, by the way, I think 42% of the watchers of Outlander, episode one, yep. were male. Really? Swear to God, that's what the reports were saying. So, guys, if you are a gentleman or just a man, maybe you don't think you're a gentleman, you can be like Blake and 
Uh, I'm definitely yeah. not a gentleman. Oh, we would love to also hear from you because we have a lot of ladies. Ladies, I love you. I'm right here with you. But when I heard that 42% of the listeners uh, were watchers of Outlander were male, I said we need to talk to some more men. Mm-hmm. So enjoy, enjoy the boobs. So <laughs> layers upon layers upon layers of clothing. Oh, my God, right? Holy smokes. And that bum pillow. Uh, yeah, that was the thing that struck me most was the bum pillow. It kind of looked like a boppy, like what people use when they hold a baby. <laughs> a boppy pillow, but for your bum. Yeah. The the bummy pillow. The badonk. <laughs> the badonk pillow. I got big butts. I like. I cannot lie. <laughs> and she must be so hot. Oh my God, right? Wow. I'm all set, but she's you all You got dressed. like 42 layers of clothing. You got to look good when you meet Colin McKenzie, though. I mean, yeah, I know. He's, he's the layered and you got to... You gotta, be straight and she goes into his room and he has all these birds and finds out that it actually is 1743 now i took a moment to look at this room what a gorgeous room the entire room was like painted Mm -hmm. and it had some kind of a mural i just wish i could have paused it and zoomed in and the chairs were so ornate they were beautiful and Claire realizes that this is decades before the American Revolution. England and France are at war. And one of the hands of the king is on the throne. And she doesn't know which one. And she explains to Colm, because he's like, hey, girl, you're hanging out in my, my castle. Who are you? And she's yeah. like, oh, I was, I was almost raped by Black Jack Randall. And I would like to go home now, please. Now, I, look, I don't want to keep hopping on these voiceovers. But the voiceover that we got in this particular scene saying... Oh, if all the all that exposition of well, uh, England and France are at war, and and uh, the, I know that all the weapons and everything had to be 18th century. That was all unnecessary. It really was. The one part that was necessary, and the, what I did like was like they showed the letter that she was reading, and it said 1743. All of that information of the voiceover was captured in that one letter. I don't know. I wouldn't have known that England and they were at war at that time. But I what, mean, what, I what mean, I'm saying is no- it's, 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 it's relevant, but it's not relevant to that. It's not relevant to the scene. It's not relevant to the show at that very moment. Okay. Voiceovers for me, I love them as long as they provide something, an emotional aspect that you cannot get shown on that particular scene. For example, when you, you the the scene when she's walking out and she looks at 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 the Dougal playing with the kid, mm-hmm. she's talking about how, uh, you know, it was she felt she, like she was on an alien. planet. She felt like she was in an alien planet, right? And and it, you know, all these customs they're familiar to her, but it was like looking at them through a telescope that it, she only knew them by second nature. That was probably the best voiceover of the entire show so far, in my opinion. Because it finally gave her and it gave the viewer that kind of panic that she's in. That kind of like, oh my God, dude, this is real. And I have to figure out what I'm going to do here. And that is the voiceover that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Not the, oh, well, by the weapons and by that, all that, it's nonsense. Colm and uh, Claire have a little stumbling point over each other about sexual assaults. And what, oh, what yeah. is a good reason for it? And Claire really kind of sticks it to him. And she's like, is there ever a good reason for rape? Oh, she just owned him in this one. Like, that was awesome. Yeah. And uh, he kind of took a piece of humble pie at that point. He's like, yeah, sorry. That was a bad turn of phrase. What did you think about Colm? I mean, he walks in and his legs, ouch, ouch, ouch. Owie. Like, whoa. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was a uh, like it was distortion in my TV at first. Mm-hmm. But clearly, obviously, it wasn't. Colm is that kind of guy that I sit there and I look at him and he's going to be your buddy. And he's going to be your buddy. He's going to tell you that he's your buddy, but he's not your buddy. And clearly at the end of the show, at the end of this episode, you realize that he's not Claire's buddy. He's not going to be cool with her. And he sighs and erupts the whole time. This guy is dumb as a fox. That's the way that he plays it. Well, he does tell her in this conversation that she can leave in five days and head on back to Inverness. Yep. And, and that's why... I think she kind of steps in it later on because she's going around telling everybody, oh, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I'm doing whatever I got to do. And she's talking to people and kind of getting in people's faces. It reminds me of senioritis when you're a senior yeah. and you like are starting to be a little mean to your teachers or you, or you get a little lazy with your homework because you're like, Psst, whatever, man, I'm leaving. But then your college get your gets your last quarter transcripts. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit in trouble sometimes. <laughs> so... 
she even gets in trouble again when she's sitting next to Colm at dinner and he's given her wine and oh, given yeah. her food and he's like, hey, you have a French last name and yet you said it like an English woman. Yeah. I don't really understand why Clearly, you're saying this. totally premeditated on Colm and Dougal's behalf, by the way. And I, I, that scene when she's walking down the aisle and everybody just stops and looks at her, it's like a bad nightmare. Oh God! You know that happened to me. That happened to me in high school. I walked into the bully, and my whole food tray went all over her. And literally, <laughs> everyone stopped talking. Everyone just stared at me because here I was, literally covering my school bully in spaghetti. <laughs> and so I felt Claire's pain of being like, "I'm awkward. Everyone is looking at me right now." But she got to sit at the head table, which was great. But again, it was premeditated, and you knew. That things were go- were going awry as the answers were coming very slowly and in a way that was clearly made up, and you knew that Colum knew that too, and he he knew that she was going to start drinking to to like bide her time to make room for her to think of an answer, it, like take a sip, you know, and then think, okay, what am I going to say, and then talk, and he just keeps pouring that wine or whatever it was, mead or beer yeah. or whatever it was. He's pouring it and pouring it, and he knows. All I got to do is just keep pouring this, and I'm going to get the truth out of this girl. I loved when she was like, oh, hi, Hamish. Hi, yeah. I'm Claire. <laughs> just desperately trying. please. <laughs> oh, wasn't that fine when you were playing with your dad in the courtyard? And he's like, what are you talking about? Wah, She's like, wah. your dad, Dougal. <laughs> Oops. I'm the heir. <laughs> oh, excuse you, Hamish. I wonder, the, okay, with... with uh, Colum's legs like the way they are mm-hmm. I wonder if he's actually capable of getting it on uh, oh, I don't know right okay and, and if he's not capable of getting it on is Claire that far off where Dougal may be the dead I mean we may have to do a little Google later this week about this condition that he has correct what I'm saying is the way that Dougal looked at it, it, it clearly could be convi- like it conveyed as, dude, that's not my kid. Or it could be conveyed like, hey, shut the hell up. That's my kid. But we're saying it's Colum's kid because he is incapable of getting it on. Oof. That, Whatever it was, that, it was an awkward That's moment. one of my outlandish theories of the week. Okay. I can roll with that. But it, but, I'm, but that's not my main one. I'm, that, I'm, just, I'm just going with that. You know what else was awkward? What's that? When Claire was asking about Mr. McTavish. Oh, and nobody knew his name. God. They're like, they're like, what? Who's Mr. McTavish? What are you talking about? It's Jamie. So Claire, of course, excuses herself because she's a drunk. <laughs> she's hammered. Goodness. Hey, here's an idea. When you get hammered, don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up. Seriously. And then don't miss breakfast with Mrs. Patmore the next morning. Oh, she she was hungover and she should have eaten. Oh, my God. What and are you doing? Instead, she goes and she makes a little picnic for Jamie because that's what... You know, we should do. <laughs> when you're hungover, especially. Yeah, yeah. Heads on over to the stables. And I thought it was really cute to see him working with the horse. Yeah, and, he, and he's like doing that. Yeah. Thing. Like, why do people do that with horses, by the way? Because that's what you do with horses. Is, just that, like, like, is that like a ho- part of like the horse course? where you, you go there and you learn and you've got to talk to a horse. You got to. I, I guess so. I don't know. You know what, though? As she was walking there, did you know she had a little little friend following her around? No. You didn't. Oh, oh, it was Rupert. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. You kept seeing him being like, "I'm just gonna keep following you around." Here we go. <laughs> so I loved when Claire went, gave him some lunch, and he was sweet with her. And he was talking about how the horse has, you know, a spirit of 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 its own. And it, part of me thinks that obviously he's not talking about the horse. He's talking about Claire, because you know she knocked a couple over the horse, kind of drew back and knocked them over, and. I think he likes Claire for that spunk that she's given. And I think that's why he gets the beat down, by the way, from Dougal when he, he when he does volunteer his tribute. I think Dougal's teaching him a freaking lesson. What is he teaching him? He's teaching him, shut the hell up. Stop making a scene out of yourself with this woman, number one. And number two, you are an outlaw. Yes, you're protected here. Yes, I'm your uncle. Call him as your uncle. But if word gets out, he, even Jamie was saying it himself. Yeah, that he has a huge price in his head that is worth like a farm, like whatever a farm makes in a year. Yeah, like there are people in the out, uh, on the outskirts of the castle that would give him up to the British. And can you imagine the kind 
of crap that's going to rain down on Castle Leoc if they find out Jamie is there. He's he's bringing down a whole boatload of crap on that castle. Yeah. So, Jamie, shut up, bro. Stop talking. I think that's what Dougal was trying to teach him. It was on multiple layers for Jamie here. That stinks because Jamie said he was blamed for this murder that he didn't do. Mm-hmm. And it was four years ago. So but he's I wonder, been on the run for four years. I he wonder, had to even eat grass. <laughs> it's not very filling, apparently. No. <laughs> I wonder, though, if he's telling the whole truth. Huh. Well, Claire asks him. She's like, buddy, you don't know me. Why are you telling me this? Like, you just said I can make a boatload of money off of... Yes, you in. But why he, are you telling me but this? But he clearly likes her. And I wonder if he's telling the whole truth. She eventually says to him, you're a, an extremely complicated man. Mm-hmm. But this is another outlandish theory I got. Jamie, it, it, the way he's like portraying himself, he's like the perfect, most perfect dude ever, right? He's like funny and he's manly. He wears a kilt and he's got like dirt on him right he can speak to horses and he speaks to horses right and, and he's and he's like sensitive and he's funny at the same time talking about he's how he's like you know how he's just gonna trust her and it, you, you are too perfect it's all it, it's to me it's a facade there's there's some stuff jamie ain't the wholesome dude that he's making himself out to be I, I i'm putting a guarantee on that one he is a complicated man you know who's making things a little more complicated is Claire. Because Claire's getting a little flirtatious. Mm-hmm. When they're saying goodbye, she's like, just try not to get flogged or stabbed, okay? <laughs> but you know she wants it because she's like, if you get flogged or stabbed, I get to touch your body. And that, and that is a girl power girl power move. Yes. Like, that's just one of the, This is like sex ed 101, Do you know guys. what he called her at that point? No. He called her Sassanak. Oh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, she gave a little sigh. And, and then yeah, and then like there, like like Sasanak used to be like a bad word, but when he said it, it was kind of like she was like, uh-uh. oh, I kind of like that. That is no longer mud blood. She, she, <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Blood started the flow on that Ooh, one. Ooh, yes. So Claire leaves, and uh, she realizes she's been followed. She's totally mad at Rupert. <laughs> I just love. Rupert might be my other favorite character. Uh, yeah, I mean, and he and Mrs. Fitz are friends. They're so, buddies. Yeah. I could see why. And I loved how Dougal was like, I mean, how Rupert was like, Dougal told me to do it. I'm just his eyes. You know, it could be worse. You could be sharing a guard. I'm sharing guard duty with Angus. And what is he? He like, he smells and he likes women who smell because he also likes to be it, No, no, animals. he's like, he, he loves women. If there's not women around, he likes to have female beasts. Oh, God. <laughs> What a funny young man. And she's like, yeah, well, I'll shower then. He's like, yeah, well, that'll be new. And this is where Claire gets pretty pretty ballsy. And she runs up to Dougal. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hey, why do you think I'm an English spy? You know? And you, I deserve an answer. Yeah, she's just, she's like. You like, you like my British girl accent again? Yeah. I'm going to do that at least once a podcast, by the way. Okay. It's just so everybody knows. I I, I don't know if I I'm going to imitate like Claire as much as I can. <laughs> and I look at she's like, well, uh, I hope they have lots to report to you for the next four days. And I felt like she needed to take her hand, put it on her nose, wave it, and stick out her tongue and say, na 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 na. No, what she needed to do was take her foot and put it in her mouth as fast as she could. Mm-hmm. Dude, why are you trying to shove it in this guy's face? Yeah, he was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, I'm leaving with Mr. Petrie on Saturday. She basically lands out the entire thing. I am leaving I know. with Mr. Petrie on Saturday. Oh, you'd think that your brother told... No, no, hold on. Oh, you'd think that your brother told you. Like, what? why are you antagonizing this guy? Because it's Claire. And that's why she gets into trouble. Yep. She, she made her own bed at this point. She's pissing off people... Her 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 mouth is writing checks her body can't cash. She felt so cool that she like took a little nap or whatever and she's getting dressed and she's like, Oh, I'm gonna be so boring and she's humming a cute little tune from the forties. Yes, I love nineteen forties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the seventeen forties. And then jazz music came over, like, you know, not, yeah, a not good over, hint. Not over the castle, but in her head and she's out like picking mushrooms and hanging out with the sheep and you hear like some little trumpet go on and she is just feeling it. She's you can tell she's like, In four days, I'm gonna be back in the nineteen forties. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be listening to that jazz in real life and mm-hmm. I'm gonna be away from Dugo. And it was a great reminder too that this woman definitely is not of this time yeah 
She's thinking of this stuff. And it's a subtle hint. It wasn't in your face. A great opportunity for character development. Yeah. She bumps into Gillis Duncan. And I loved Gillis. She was like, oh, you're getting those mushrooms. Are you going to plan on uh, doing away with your husband? If it works, I'm going to use it on mine. (laughs) And she says, you know, uh, I know how to give people abortions if they eat these little flowers. Some people think I'm a witch. And Claire asks her, she's like, are you? And she's like, hardly. But come visit me sometime because I have potions and medicinals. So, you know, but I'll see you later tonight in the hall. I also know how to turn a toad into a dove into a toad or something. Yeah. It's something like that. Yeah. So she ends up seeing her later that night in the in the hall. Claire mm-hmm. has this beautiful choker all of a sudden and earrings. Oh, I know. Like that was actually. Can you wear a choker more often? Because that was kind of smoking hot. Chokers were really in in like the, the 90s. 90s yeah. yeah. And they're not in yet. But, it, but yeah, the 90s have been coming back. So I bet you by like 2016 chokers are going to be back in yeah so anyway it's a grand forum people come up and they express their problems and column fixes it and this is when claire figured out what syndrome he had and what what his condition actually is and she knows that boyfriend is, is living yeah he has the power time, to, to lose lautrec syndrome yeah which it which it affects the the, the muscles the and, the and the bones muscles. and how they connect the connective tissue. Yeah. And uh, he looks like he's a horse walking. Gillis interprets what the villagers are saying. They have a grand time. And then a father brings in a young woman. And Mrs. Fitz looks a little little nervous. Oh, yeah. And accuses her of having loose behavior. <laughs> what do you think actually happened? What would be loose behavior? I'll tell you what was loose behavior. Okay, watch yourself. Never mind. <laughs> and um, she, she he, he wants her to be punished for disobedience. And instead, Jamie, like takes her punishment for her mm-hmm. he, he's a tribute he, mm-hmm. he pulls a Katniss and the girl runs off to Mrs. Fitz and he decided Jamie decides that he wants to have the fists instead of the strap so he gets beaten up pretty badly and Dougal keeps eyeing it on being like nope keep going because teaching him the lesson Gillis said they will stop when blood is drawn usually when the nose is broken yeah that happened like blood was drawn and then still Dougal gave the eye and next it gets punched in the shoulder, oh. which has been dislodged and shot. <laughs> and then he gets punched again and pretty much knocked out. I mean, Jamie took it like a champ. I loved this is my favorite scene. I think mm-hmm. when when Rupert is sitting there looking at Jamie and he's like, bro, this is going to suck. I'm sorry. And it's going to hurt but we're still going to be cool after this, right? Oh my God, he's so awkward. And I felt so bad for him as as Dougal's telling him to keep going. And he's looking back like, you got to be kidding me. I, I've been pummeling this guy and you want me to keep going? I, I loved his whole facial expression, this entire thing. The character drama between between Dougal, Rupert, and Jamie. Y- y- nothing had to be said. Nope. You can just you can see the whole scene play out. No Claire voiceover was needed. <laughs> I loved at the end when Jamie does a little bow for Colum, mm-hmm. and, and then, then he nothing gives for Dougal. eyes. No, he gave he gave evil eye. He gave some stank eye that he learned from Mrs. Fitz. <laughs> he gave he gave Dougal some serious stank eye. Yeah, and that's gonna be a problem. And then Claire goes to mend him again. Oh, poor Jamie, you got beaten up again. Just touch my glistening muscles over and over again. She's will like, you? why would you do that? Why the heck did you just get beaten up? And he he says like, if the girl, if Leah had been beaten, she would have been shamed, and it would have been really, really long for her to like get over it because everyone else would have seen her been beaten. It's easier for me. He's basically being like, I get beaten up all the time anyway. Nobody here really likes me. Yeah. So I don't care. Yeah, you know, and I I understand the reasoning behind why he did it and why he said it. Part of me, however, thinks that he saw Claire at that at the the hall right before all this stuff happened. And he may not have known what was going to happen, but when it was announced that this girl for loose behavior was going to be punished and he had the opportunity to take the punishment, I feel like he did it for Claire. Like, Did he want to be touched again by Claire? Or did I, he want to like flex his muscles? Uh, well, more? a little bit of uh, D, all of the above. Okay. I think he wanted to be touched by Claire again. He wanted to create a, 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 a scenario where he was going to be touched by her. And then also, too, he wanted to prove to her that he could take a pound in. And that he would do anything to protect her. And you see, and okay, and maybe I'm, it's, I'm talking out of my butt. Okay, fine. But you see as he's walking by with his buddy, you see him look at Claire yeah. like, look what I just did. I thought it was a look of, hey, can you please meet me downstairs? I'm hurting. <laughs> please? Okay, five minutes. Okay, you know what? Keep it simple, stupid. You're Thank probably right. Okay. 
Um, she tells him while she's fixing him up, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm leaving tomorrow, so you're yeah. going to want to fix your bandages. I'm going with Mr. Petrie. Mm-hmm. Tell everybody, tell everybody <laughs> hey, I'm leaving. Claire, keep talking, girl. Keep talking. Love it. Yes. And Jamie seems a little bummed. Yeah. He seems a little bummed, and he's like, all right, I guess this is goodbye. And then Leah comes in and cock blocks this. Oh, yeah. Because they're about to say, like, goodbye or whatever. And she comes in, obviously, to probably say thank you for taking a beating for Uh, me. No, no. She's going to do more than saying thank you. Well, hey, girlfriend has a loose reputation, so who knows? (laughs) But she's standing there, and it's kind of this awkward. You could see Jamie. He's, like, looking at her like, really, girl? Can you just give me a minute? And Claire doesn't care because Mm -hmm. Claire's mind is, like, once again, I'm leaving tomorrow with Mr. Petrie. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Fix your bandages. See you, suckas. I'm going to go see live jazz. Peace out. (laughs) Yeah, that's really what's going on. So I I thought that was a fun little scene to see because Jamie was a little bummed. Yep. I can see why. I, I I can see why he'd be bummed. This girl here, she's a lot like him. She she just doesn't take crap, and nobody likes her in this area. Everyone thinks that she's a spy. Yeah. And nobody likes Jamie, really, except for his buddies that surround him. They're, like, basically the same person. So Claire gets a wonderful basket of food from Mrs. Fitz, and you could tell Mrs. Fitz is, like, really pumped. She's like, here you go. The cheese will last you a week. <laughs> and Claire's all dressed up. She's got her little scarf on, and Colin wants to see her. Mm-hmm. She is like, oh, crap. Mr. Petrie's here. She's like, Mr. Petrie, I'll be back in five minutes. Don't leave without me. Hold on to my cheese. And, he, and he, she says, why does he need to see me? And Dougal says, it doesn't matter. <sighs> Dougal. Just just show up and do what I'm telling you. And now she start. now this is when I think she realizes, uh, I done effed up. Yep. And she goes into that door that she and Frank had to like push down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> The room where she got it on a little. The table upon which she had sex. Yes, with Frank. So she's remembering all of this and she's now realizing, oh my gosh, I'm going to this room and I am not excited. I was excited last time. Mm -hmm. I am not excited this time. And Cullum asks her if she's a healer and if she's from that clan, beat him. Beaten. Beaten. Yep. And she says no. And she realizes that they're now in the surgery room. And she keeps having flashbacks to what it was like the last time she was there with Frank. A little bit different this time, girl. Oh, yeah. I don't think Colm's going down on you now. Nope. I I don't think he physically could even be able to. (laughs) It'd be kind of awkward. He's like, actually, I'd like you to be my healer. The position has been vacated, and you're pretty good at it. And it's my decision. I think, you know, you need to stay. And she's like, I don't think so. Mr. Petrie's outside. And he says, no, I think you have some secrets. Until I'm okay with it, until I'm cool with you leaving, you're going to stay here as my guest. And she says, you mean as your prisoner. And it made me feel like Belle with, yeah. with Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> when, when he like, you know, he locks her in a door because he's trying to have dinner. And she's like, I don't want to do dinner with you. And he's like, fine, then stop. And he like slams the door in her face and she <laughs> flops on her bed and cries. I really felt like Claire was, was Belle in this. In His scene. reply was phenomenal. It was only if you try to leave. Oh, when she asks, I'm your prisoner. Yeah. yeah. And yep. it's like, it, it's oh, it said so much more than what it was. Yep. You know, and then they shut the door like she's locked in there. She wasn't locked in. No, but they closed her in. So it they closed her in and it felt that way. And, and if she does try to leave, no matter what, she's a prisoner. If she leaves that room, she's a prisoner. If she leaves that castle, she's a prisoner. No matter what, she's stuck there. And she starts to cry. And I wrote down, she's crying because her cheese is outside and Mr. Petrie is driving away. <laughs> That's going to go bad in a week. <laughs> she, Do you think it was Petri- Brie? Mr. Petrie will not be back in a week. He probably comes like once a month. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, you know, that cheese is not going to be good. Oh, that cheese is going to be gross. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Well, there was some pretty few flute playing in the end. And then there was a coming up next week, which we're not even going to get into that. Nah, there don't was like bother. some crazy stuff. All right, so what do you say? Let's jump into the listener feedback. Let's do it. Suzanne M. tweeted out to us, Poor Jenny. Never even had a line in this episode, but we got to see your boobs. Jenny, that is what you are known for right now. (laughs) Booby Jenny. Gannon Carr says, Watching episode 102 on Outlander again, because there is no such thing as too much shirtless Jamie. Oh, that or Jacob in Twilight. Same dude, basically. <laughs> no shirt. No, no shirt. shirt. Never. Don't need a shirt for anything. Megan tweets out, 
Much of the show is as she imagined. It's like viewing old home movies, seeing her memories on the TV. And I thought this was phenomenal. It, it, it probably, for book readers, it must feel like a home movie, right? You, it's like that, all that old familiar stuff. You know all the names. You know all the people. Your friends. It's, yeah, you're reliving like great old memories. Looking in a yearbook. Yep. Stacy M. tweets out, I really wish my dear son would fall asleep. Doesn't he realize I have a freshly recorded episode of Outlander on my DVR? And Jamie is calling me. Oh, Stacy M., we are right there with you. Our kid doesn't like to fall asleep. You can check out our new podcast, Parent Cast. Yep. We have a, a whole great episode about getting your kid to sleep. So good luck with that. Lisa Branford tweeted, The opening Outlander credits still make me cry. Aww. No words for how great Bear McCurry's Outlander theme is. Not even a big key smash covers it. <laughs> That's right, girl. I love Bear McCurry. Although... I think I like Michael Giacchino a little bit more still. He's phenomenal. The guy who composed all of Lost. Karen tweets out, resistance is futile. Now, we had a big conversation about this on Twitter. I, the reason why I'm putting this on here is because she quoted the Borg on Star Trek in reference to Outlander. And I pretty much had a nerdgasm over this. It was like, and she eventually hashtagged it when, when uh, fandoms collide. And I was just like, oh, my God. So, Karen, I'm giving you total props for this. That was genius. Danielle Mahoney said, simply the story and the characters is what she loved. Feeling the emotions of all the characters, it pulled her right in. Amy Begley tweeted out, love, love, loved, loved the twist. Column and Dougal threw out Claire. You see the disappointment in Jamie. It's more suspense since she knew she wasn't going to go anywhere. It was bros cr- cruelty oh yeah they were, they were tag team in that mm-hmm. Deb TX said that she may want to leave the 17th century but she does not want to leave Jamie oh who would he's he, like I said last podcast he is dreamy I wouldn't want to leave that cheese that, sounded really good <laughs> that guy I'm telling you something ain't right about Jamie he's, he's, he ain't what he says he is I keep reading Amy tweets out I think she wants to leave but who wouldn't in her situation? She was torn away from her husband and tossed around in time. And Amy, thank you. Thank you for giving us this perspective. Because we're so caught up in this whole Claire Jamie thing that you forget that she's kind of in love with Frank back home. She does have a husband. She does have these feelings for him. And I'm I, like, I, I'm already getting this Team Jamie, Team Frank feeling, like kind of like Twilight, Team Edward, Team Jacob. And right now... I'm on Team Frank, bro. Well, that's her husband. I'm total Team Frank. Frank didn't do anything to deserve the crap that she's going to go through right now. I don't... I I just feel bad for Claire. I mean, I would just want to get home for the indoor plumbing. That place looks like it smells bad. <laughs> and cheese that lasts more than a week. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam Milikistan says that she loves hearing lines from the book. It makes her really happy. So kind of in line with what our friend... Oh, to Megan. oh, Megan. Yeah, Megan. Megan. That, that a girl. Yes, Miriam and Megan. You guys are really happy that the lines from the books are finally on the screen. More alliteration, by the way. Mary and Megan and Jamie and Jenny. Hey, there you go. They might wow, be related. It's like, it's like a theme this episode. <laughs> Emmy Rivera said, Jamie, dude, you must be a masochist. Ouch. Yeah. He likes to take a beating. Jennifer Boyum loved the show tonight. Bravo has the musical direction and costumes. Knit gloves, a.k.a. arm warmers will be in season this year. And I am so right there with you. Blake even agrees. Blake <laughs> noticed the knit gloves. Honestly, I didn't know that was in there. So we are like totally on the same level here, Jennifer. Yeah. Shannon Crawford tweets, anybody else heart go out thump when Jamie's squatted down to talk to Claire in the barn? Uh, no. <laughs> Mine did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time out. Time out. Anne-Marie Primorak tweeted, I could really use some subtitles and they speak Gaelic on Outlander. Ah. And girl... I know that some people are going to disagree because we are taking it from Claire's point of view. Mm-hmm. I'm one of them people, by the way. But I want some. I want the subtitles too. No, I, I want to know it was so funny. <laughs> I want to know it was so funny that could not be translated. Let me in on the joke, guys. Yeah. No, no. If Claire doesn't know what they're talking about, neither should we. Okay. Fine. I like that. I like that that theory. I like that uh, the idea behind that. All right. Well, speaking about about theories, let's talk about the outlandish theories of the week. Camille Hay wonders if the vase in episode one had belonged to Claire at some point in the past. Oh, excellent, Camille. Camille also wonders if Frank sees Claire's name in the quartermaster's records, if they kept records like that back then. Oh, so if yeah. this time travel stuff is happening at the same time, could possibly Frank see Claire's name? 
does it like do like the Back to the Future thing where like it kind of appears yes. like out of nowhere? Like you know? Camille, you are like totally rocking that outlandish theory. Camille, Danielle, girl, that was awesome, right? Danielle Mahoney says, "I think she only exists up to the time she was transported back. Then she became her own ancestor. No conventional rules apply." So Danielle, that's her take on time travel. Wow. Yeah, I would agree with that to an extent because okay, let's say correct that she only exists she does become her own ancestor she gets transported back and her body exists in that time but the problem that you have then is that she's stuck in a constant loop she becomes her own ancestor great then she gets born she she lives her time until she gets transported back again becomes her own ancestor is it kind of like sea monkeys i feel like that's what sea monkeys do you no, know, it's kind of like Groundhog Day. Oh, uh, that's what I'm talking about, but okay. on a much larger scale. Gotcha. You well, know what I'm talking about? Like, what is your outlandish theory of the week? All right, my outlandish theory of the week is this. I got, I kind of got two. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with two. First off, Claire has got to get out of Castle Leoc. There's too many things happening around her. There are too many people gunning after her. And guess who's gonna get her out of Castle Leoc? Who? Jamie. Oh, 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 there you go. Jamie's going to get this girl out of there. And she's he, he's got to get her out of there. Just story-wise, they got to get her out. They got to get her off of that castle because it's too dangerous for her. Someone's going to find out. Someone's going to figure out that she is not who she says she is. They may not figure out the time travel thing, but those lies are going to catch up to her. But my main outlandish theory of the week, that girl Gellis, that one that, that, that says she's the witch... Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. This is this is my idea. She is an ancestor to the lady that was the doing the dance, the druid dance. Oh. She's an ancestor to that lady, right? Okay. And we know she was doing the tea leaves and all this other stuff. There's a history there, and like she wasn't like, dude, I'm not a witch. She was like, yeah, they, I'm, I'm hardly a witch, but I do know how to do X, Y, and Z. So you should come visit me now. Jamie's going to get her out of out of Castle Leoc, right? Okay. They're going to go visit this girl, and they're going to try to get her to go back to Inverness, to Craig, Craig the Dune. Yes. And they're going to try to, she is going to, they're going to use her, her witch abilities to send her back to the 40s. So you think she might be part of this Druid crew? Totally part of the Druid wow. crew. She's totally into that stuff. Interesting theory, Blake. Damn, I like it. Damn straight. Well, once again, I am a book reader, so I am not participating in the outlandish theories. I will enjoy them, though. I <laughs> will let you know about this week's Tweet of the Week. This week's Tweet of the Week comes from... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> At gotta go soon. Yes. She said that she is missing her favorite cousin's wedding and high school reunion, but at least Stars Outlander, the Outlander show on Stars, is on. And I love these hashtags. She has hashtag priorities confused and then hashtag hope they post a lot of pics. <laughs> so I hope that they did post a lot of pics, but I hope that the episode was worth it. I think this was an awesome episode. Hope you had fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Thanks. All right. We had some favorite moments from people. Gladys Anun says that her favorite moment was when Jamie was taking a beating for Leia. Ooh. Yeah. Jamie C. said that she loved the scene with Mrs. Fitz dressing Claire. Love the look, but it's so happy women don't wear all that stuff anymore. Jennifer says that her favorite moment was Rupert's witty dialogue. She loves that character. Her least favorite was previews of next week. Why does Mrs. Fitz call Clara a witch? I know we're not even talking about that because I can't even handle that. Oh my God. Lisa Arata says her favorite part was the erotic undertones carried over from the book in the show. And Sam Hewen, of course. Mm. Why not? We had some great feedback on Instagram. Jolene Riviera said her favorite was the Jamie Claire scene at the stables, mm -hmm. whereas her least favorite was Jamie taking the beating. Oh, so you're not a masochist, I guess. Ah. Read on Instagram said her, her favorite scene was Jamie telling Claire that she, she doesn't need to be scared of him. Le least. <laughs> what? Is this Rita? I'm sorry, girl. I can't read anything that you wrote because Mary is incapable of spelling anything correctly. No, that's and no, no, no. Hold on. Wait. Scared. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. She spelled scared. No. S C. Oh, you want to say this? I R T. That's what he says. Yeah, but come on. I'm reading. I'm not Scottish. 
<laughs> I'm from Boston. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and as I'm reading the thing, she's changing the document in Google Drive as I'm reading it. So I can't keep up with Blake, it. Blake obviously could not have actually read the Outlander books because he would not have understood what any of the Highlanders said. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> Just you say the words and they sound okay, the same. Okay. It, Rita, <laughs> her favorite scene was Jamie telling Claire she doesn't need to be scared of him. Least anything related to Lee. <laughs> Lee, yeah. <laughs> What, Leah? You're, you won't you won't be able to call her name if I show you how it's spelled. The girl that that was supposed to be beaten. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Bla- okay. Let me just. Oof, okay. Read Rita Blake, girl. Blake I'm sorry. Never read these books. Blake is basically saying that Rita on Instagram said she loved when Jamie told Claire, "You don't need to be scared of me," and her least favorite was anything with oh, the blonde oh, okay. girl. You you need to like do a better job with this. Blake, you just I just need to know that you can't read anything that has a Scottish lilt. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. My goodness. <sighs> Guys, great news. In case you haven't heard, after just one episode, mm-hmm. one episode, Stars has decided that there will be a season two of Outlander. Excellent. So you can be pumped and tell all of your friends who aren't fans of the show that they need to watch it. Now, speaking of loving the show, we got some feedback about our podcast. A Dram of Outlander said that she loves Blake's untainted view, that it's very refreshing, and hearing it through his filter is eye-opening. Outlander, Dream- Outlander Dreaming said Blake is now an Outmander. Ooh, yeah. I like this. Lisa Mayo said that her only complaint of the show is waiting a week for another episode. She waited two decades to see Outlander, and this is perfect. We also got some great voicemails that we want you to hear. I am in love with Outlander. Cannot wait to watch the whole series in one fell swoop. Cannot, cannot love, love, love Outlander any more than I already do. Girl, I am right there with you. I think that she is believes she cannot leave the 18th century and that she is a prisoner. She has no reason to think anything else, given the uh, details that have occurred to her personally if i were in claire's situation right now i wouldn't be too happy if i was in claire's situation a few episodes from now it might be a different story thank you for calling in guys i want to make sure that it, it when you call in next time just say your name and where you're from just so we can actually give you credit to whoever is calling and it's not that we don't appreciate these voicemails. We definitely do. We just want to give you the proper credit. That's yeah. all. So know? tell us your name, where you're from, and keep your feedback to a minute or less so that that way we can put it up on the show. Yep. As we always have said, we love ratings and reviews on iTunes. So we got some great reviews this week that we'd love to tell you about. Mm-hmm. One of them is Brooklyn JC. She said she's a longtime fan of the Outlander series, but she loves the format of our podcast and Thank hearing you. our theories, especially from Blake, who is only watching the show. You both are great hosts, and I look forward to listening each week after each new episode. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so incredibly much for tuning into this week's Outlander cast. It has been such a pleasure rehashing this episode with you, tweeting during the show and throughout the entire week. Talking about boobs and cheese. (laughs) Yes. If you would like to get in contact with us, there are many ways. You can first find us on our website. It is outlandercast.com. And I really want to push, like push you guys. If you don't have iTunes, a lot of people said that they don't have iTunes or that their tablet doesn't allow it. You can listen to our episodes on outlandercast.com straight off the website we have a player embedded into the post so if you have any friends who are a fan of the show and they don't have itunes tell them just to go to outlandercast.com you can also catch us on facebook at facebook.com slash outlandercast we love tweeting with you so join in the conversation our twitter handle twitter handle is outlandercast get us on the email machine too at outlandercast at gmail.com and you know you can also get us on the hotline we love those voicemails. Like I said, make sure you get your name and where you're from just so we can give you the proper credit. You can call us at 503-454-6730. And last but certainly not least, please, 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 please share the love on mm-hmm. iTunes. This is how more people find out about Outlander Cast. Remember, our show is all about the show. We are spoiler free and we want to make sure that new fans, old fans, 
all fans of Outlander get to find us. So head on over to iTunes. Don't just give us a star, but make sure you write in a little something. Give us something to read on air because we love you guys. We want to call you out. That's right. We want to give you a little heads up. And, and, and if, you, if you don't like what you're hearing from us or you want to hear more stuff from the book, more comparisons, go visit the other podcasts that are dedicated to Outlander. Go listen to the Scott and the Sassanok. Those guys talk about themes and really breaking down the story, how to really get involved in the Outlander story. Phenomenal stuff. And then you also have the Outlander podcast. Listen to them. They t- they love discussing the books. They were like madly in love with them and they're really smart in regards to the books. So please go listen to them. I'm sure they'll catch stuff that we miss and they'll think of things because they're probably way, way smarter than me. <laughs> And just listen to them, rate and review them too. Please, please do that. It, we're all one big family and we want to make sure we all we all do well and give you the best product we can. Thanks again for chatting with us over Twitter this week and joining in the conversation. I love chatting with you guys. Blake does too. Let's just keep it spoiler free. Once again, <laughs> I'm Mary. My name is Blake. And thanks for listening to Outlander Cast. Mm-hmm.